where I want to start this conversation is personnel because it's mm. it's a hot topic. And honestly, it's been a hot topic for many years because it's one we talk about a lot because we love Taron Johnson and the nickel, you know, five DBs on the field, regardless of what the offense sends out at them. And mm -hmm. the Chiefs went right at this entire discussion and entire strategy. So in this game, listen to this, 12 personnel. So one running back, two tight ends. Chiefs ran that 34% of the time in this game against the Bills. And on average, they run that 27.6%. So a little higher in that department. Now, 13 personnel, they ran 23.4% of the time when they average 9.1%. So that was the big, big tick up when it comes to personnel usage in this game. And under 13 personnel, they only passed it three times. They were two for uh, two for three for 15 yards. So they did it primarily to run the ball. And they had seven designed rushes for 80 yards Ooh. and two rushes over 12 yards. And of course, the Bills, as I said, they love to match with nickel. And given the linebacker situation in this game because of those injuries, that was a big thing in this game. But I don't want people to think, because a lot of these national media types are saying, oh, it's because of Taron Johnson mm -hmm. that the Bills were giving up these many yards. Actually, that's not true. Now, it's a philosophical thing. It's mm -hmm. been a thing for McDermott of playing nickel versus 12 and 13. But it's not technically because of Taron Johnson that these big plays were happening in the Chiefs, against the Chiefs, and the entire season, which we're going to break down some of those stats here in a minute. Yeah, and he's been a... Honestly, one of the better Bills run defenders through the majority of the year, like year after year, we talk about him all the time, like how he plays, like he thinks he's like 6'2", 250, the way he takes on linemen and shoots gaps. And he's a consistent piece for them, even in the run. And we saw earlier in the year, especially the healthier the Bills were, you know, when it was Milano and, and Bernard. And when teams would go a little heavier, they'd bring in. Tyrell Dodson, even when Milano went down, it was Dodson and Bernard. They bring in Dorian Williams or another mm -hmm. third or a third linebacker to go a little more base. We saw them start to get away from just pure nickel all the time, all the time. But like you said, it's not because of Taron Johnson. And especially in this game, the bills were at such a disadvantage on that second level. And the chiefs really used that heavier personnel grouping to pinpoint and create those mismatches and those advantages, especially in the middle of the field and in yeah. the spine. And it by extension then brings Taron Johnson into the conversation and nickel into that conversation. But exactly to your point, it's not like, it's not a Taron Johnson problem. You'll see, you'll see it's not Taron Johnson at the point of attack or Taron Johnson in the A or B gaps, which he does play from time to time. Yeah. But I, I just think that narrative that was pushed out this week, it it made it sound and it made it sound like it was a Taron Johnson issue when yeah. it absolutely isn't. It's and that's kind of what I'm talking about here. So let's get into some of these stats. Okay, so the following EPA, defensive EPA numbers and stats we're looking at, courtesy of True Media, are against 12 and 13 personnel in the regular season when the Bills play nickel, all right? Mm -hmm. And so if you look at some of this, it's going to tell you the, the story about how teams attack the Bills. And they do attack the Bills when the Bills are in nickel. They attack with 12 and 13 personnel. So overall, they've faced this, this personnel grouping 198 plays. That's the fourth most in the NFL, all right? So that's something to keep in mind. That's, that's high. So it's obvious the Bills like to play nickel versus 12 and 13 personnel. Now, if you look at some of the uh, rushes, the actual total rushes, I think it's off to the right here. Actually, it might be a different screen. We'll get to it in a minute. Um, the defensive total EPA, 31.68. That's second overall. That's good. So this there's a misconception out there that the Bills are bad when they have nickel in versus 12 and 13 personnel. Look at some of these numbers. They're second, they have a second ranking there. Uh, mm -hmm. total pass EPA, their first overall. Mm -hmm. Pass throw EPA, not their first overall. I mean, pass sack EPA, fifth overall. Um, scrambles, they, they probably could do some work there, which I think that's <laughs> always kind of been the case when they're mm. expanding into coverages and, you know, only rushing four. Um, interception EPA, third overall. But as expected, they do take a hit when it, it comes to the run game a little bit. So total run EPA, 0.74, that's 23rd. And when you're looking at um, non-rush uh, QB, so again, just rushes by running backs and even some mod receivers, uh, it, they have a 4.09 EPA, so that's 18. So they're just below average in that department. So it's no surprise when you look at the passing versus the rushing when teams are running with 12 and 13 personnel versus nickel, they hurt a little bit 
when it comes to the run. And a lot of that is the touchdowns that opponents have scored. But mm. this is a passing league. This is McDermott's philosophy. He cares more about, you know, defending the pass and defending the run. Now, there can go a drive. Adam, our analytics guy, always talks about, like, this is kind of inviting the run, right? Yeah, like, that's inviting the run. And EPA-wise, that's that's a win more times mm. than that. You know, analytics, that's what they want. Like, hey, yeah. if you want to run the ball when this is a passing league, by all means, do it. Mm-hmm. But they have guys like, or they had guys like Matt Milano and Bernard and Taron Johnson to create some of those disruptive plays to disrupt some of those drives and get off the field. But in this game against the Chiefs, they weren't able to do so, and it really hurt them. And again, it does come back to injuries. You cannot deny that fact. Yeah, and I, I was gonna say to connect to that piece, like they, when they are in nickel, and even when they're healthy at the linebacker spot given the fact that their second level is often Taron Johnson, Matt Milano, Terrell Bernard, they're undersized for a second level grouping, especially when they're going to play the run. But that plays into their style philosophically and schematically where they like Mm -hmm. to wet one gap and penetrate and get up field. And that's part of the reason um, year after year, they're towards the top of, you know, stuff percentage against the run and stuff's our run. They go for zero or less yards. And on the, on this season rates, right. That too. There you go. Yep. All those pieces. And this year, you know, per SIS, they were seventh in stuff percentage at 21.8. And the reason they're consistently able to generate havoc and chaos and create negative plays for the offense is because of that undersized ability lends itself to speed and one gapping and penetrating and attacking and getting forward. And then you all of a sudden you get a team into second and 12 or second and 13. And then you're playing into the strength of this defense, which is their passing ability going out of nickel and generating that. And again, I think even within the nickel conversation in Taron Johnson, again, as the film will show, they lost so bad up front on the defensive line that that's where so much of the source point was, whether in the past, but especially against the run, that's where a lot of this conversation starts and needs to be rather than just focusing on Taron Johnson and thinking he's the source point, he's the pain point for the struggles that happened in this game and then extending that systematically. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, it's it's one of those things like, sure, they're giving up 4.7 yards per rush, which is 26th overall when they see 12 or 13 personnel when they're nickel. Like, not good. But again, if you're only getting that versus 10 or 12 yard plays in the passing game, like that's overall EPA wise, that's mm-hmm. a win in this day and age in, mm-hmm. you know, today's uh, football. The, the issue isn't that, hey, maybe they should be bringing a linebacker in. Like, I, I will... Totally agree with, yeah, there are times versus certain teams where, hey, you know, and and this game is one of them. If they're running 13 personnel and they've only passed it three times, but they've run it eight times Mm -hmm. and they're gashing you, like now's a good time to pivot. Like it's okay to pivot to three linebackers. And again, a lot of, a lot goes into that in this specific game because of the injuries and even injuries that happened in this game. So, but again, I don't think, I think it's fair to debate that. Uh, mm-hmm. philosophically, when you're facing 198 plays on the season, the fourth most of nickel versus 12 and 13, obviously it's a it's a, a philosophical or strategic thing by McDermott and opposing offenses. But the the thing that I I want them to focus on is, okay, reel it back a little bit. Make, make it less than 198 plays. But if you look at the touchdown score, so there was nine touchdowns scored. This is where the issue is, okay? Nine touchdowns was the second most when teams ran 12 or 13 personnel versus the Bills nickel. That's a lot. Now, if I bring up those nine plays, if you look at the the uh, line of scrimmage column right here, look at that. It's the situations, and this is what I'm talking about. you got to adjust the slider a little bit when it comes to, hey, should we be in nickel or should we be on the field with base defense and three linebackers? Because if you look at some of these line of scrimmages, the top two are at the 17-yard line and 10-yard line. So, okay high red zone, you know, area, 17 and 10 yard line. But now the situation is at if the ball's at the six or at the three, at the two mm-hmm. or the one, and the other team has thir- 12 or 13 personnel in, probably a, a good idea to take Taron Johnson off the field. It's probably a good idea in the low red zone, red zone to take him out. So that is where the conversation should be. The situations that they take out Taron for a third linebacker. And again, just, certain teams that you play against, whether it's in your division teams that like to run a lot of 12, maybe that second tight end isn't a good pass receiver. Maybe you can again, get more beef on the field to stop the run because 
more, when teams run these personnel groupings, this is the big thing. Again, 198 plays on the season, 12 or 13 personnel versus nickel. 121 of those plays were rushes. That's a big difference. That's a tendency. You need to, again, change that slider a little bit, throw a third linebacker on there in certain situations against certain teams. Yeah, and I, th I think you said it perfectly. That is the time where you want to have that situational piece. You want to have that matchup specific piece. Like if you've got a team that's going to come in and they're heavy running the football, similar to what, I don't know, or, or even a team that, like what the Raiders like to do with, you know, have a true fullback like Jakob Johnson mm. on the field and, and they have a tight end. So they're in, you know, a two running back set, traditional eye formation, but it's more of a run look than it is to create the pass. Okay, yeah, lean into more of those three linebacker sets. It's a very fair piece to kind of adjust that dial. But holistically, the way this defense is built makes sense given today's day and age, given the style of football that is played today, and also how good Taron Johnson is. Like, he's an all-pro slot corner because of his ability to play the pass and man and zone and be able to come forward and fit yeah. the run. But there are 100%, and I think this is also part of a larger conversation where – you always need to have to turn certain dials and push certain mm -hmm. bus and bu buttons come matchup times and situational times. And it could be a third and short. It could be low red zone. It could be for an entire game based on the yeah. opponent you're going to play, like you were saying. And that's where it comes down to. It's just those little tweaks. It's those little adjustments that need to be made, not this wholesale schematic change or identity change for the defense. Yeah. I mean, he just, that's the thing. Like I understand I can rationalize, McDermott and why he does it, you know, especially if you're just talking 12 personnel, you see they're very good against the pass against 12 personnel when they're in nickel, you know, you prioritize that again. You just gotta, you gotta tweak that slider just a little bit like old, you know, old, you know, video games. You just yep. tweak that slider a little bit, make it just a little bit different. Um, and I think this was one of those games. I would have loved to see them do that again. Injuries were an issue in this game, but um, they're bringing 13, you know, personnel, three tight ends. And you're seeing them run the ball and they're getting these big plays that we're going to break down. Like you got to do something different and you got to do yeah. something different. And I will admit schematically, maybe they didn't change the structure of their defense, especially if we're talking the run game, mm -hmm. you know, Hey, they gashed them for 25, 28 yards. But the next time they ran it, which will, will break down, you saw them make a slight change and mm -hmm. how they fit up the run and mm -hmm. they stopped it as you'll see. So, they did make some schematic changes, but they didn't make the personnel changes to force the Chiefs to go somewhere else because the Chiefs were a step ahead of them when yeah. it came to the run game. Anytime that, again, the Chiefs would explosive run, the Bills would stop that run uh, the next time they ran it. Then they would go to another look, another layer, and then they'd get a good chunk, 9, 10 yards, and then the Bills would stop it. So that was the chess game in this game. 